What is going on, friends? I'm so glad that you're here. Go grab yourself a notebook, sit down, get a cup of coffee, and uh, pay attention to the next few minutes because this video is all about police note-taking. Listen, no matter what first responder you are, you need to have a good grasp on what it is to be a good note-taker. Don't go anywhere, it's coming right now. Shall we begin? Hey y'all, thanks for sticking around. So why a note taking video? Because I have been asked several times if I can go over what it is to be a good note taker. Uh, listen, I cannot tell you how important it is to have good notes because you might be called upon one, two, three, four years down the road and you have to recall certain events that you did, very detailed events that really matter. And the only way that you're gonna recall them is if they're found in your notes. So if they are not found there, then as far as your brain goes and my brain goes, it didn't even happen. You may think, well, Your Honor, there was something that went on, I can't really remember, and I didn't take notes. That is not going to fly. So pay attention, grab yourself a, a pen, a notebook, and a cup of joe, sit down and relax, and we're gonna talk everything notes. Now, before I even get into any of that, it is a full disclaimer. If your service has their way of they want you to do things, then please follow their guidelines. I am not your policy, okay? But I will tell you that the notes that you take are for you. Now, they, that being said, you have to uh, do your best to not, you know, chicken scratch everything like I do. Do your best to try to make it legible, of course, but also remember that it's, it's, the outline or the, the skeleton of what you use and how you use it is based on whatever's going to make sense for you. So do not go against whatever your, your force's policy is, but uh, these tips might just help you along the way to create and craft your own notes that's going to help you in the future. All right, now that we have the disclaimer out of the way, again, please do not go against your services advisements as far as what they want and how they want. Uh, we're going to talk about this, the who, what, when, where, why, and the added how. You're going to want to keep that in your mind as we go through this video, but more importantly, as you are out on the field, who, what, when, where, why, and how. So number one, who. So how do I even write this? So a call comes in, it's a 911 dispatch, you gotta get something down in your notes that's gonna make sense. So the first thing that I start off with is the, uh, I write in my notes, call. That tells me as I look back, it was a specific call. And I leave a space, beside that space will be the file number that that call is associated to. Right underneath the call, it's who is calling who is the complainant, not necessarily the victim, not the suspect, witnesses, and, and whoever else might be involved, but at the moment that the call comes in, it's call, the file number, underneath that, I put who. And if you want, here's a little uh, tip trick for you. On the inside of your notebook, if you wanna put that skeleton down, these are, especially when you're, when you're new at the job, you wanna write maybe who, what, when, where, why, and how, just as a reminder so that when you go to your notes, you can see how you want to write that. You can see and make sure that you, if you have time to answer those questions or, or to get answers to those questions. Uh, so it's the call, it's the file number, it's the who is calling, who is the complainant, and then the what. Right underneath is the what. What is this about? So call comes in, 911, hello, it is um, someone broke my window. Okay, so call, the file number that it's associated to, who, Jimmy, Jimmy, is calling because his window is broken. So I will put Jimmy and I'll put broken window. And then underneath you wanna put Jimmy's contact because if that line goes, goes down or you lose contact, you're gonna to wanna to know how to get in touch with Jimmy. So you write down his quick phone number just in case. And now it's, you can move on quickly to the what. Hey Jimmy, well what happened? Tell me about it. Well, I came home, my window was smashed in my house. Oh my goodness, right? So you can write that, uh, you know, home, now this is a non-emergency call, I might, I might add. Um, uh, we will go over emergency calls in a little bit. But right now this is, someone came home, Jimmy came home and his window smashed. So you write down some of those, those uh, points of, in, of information and then uh, you're gonna wanna continue on and say, Jimmy, where? Where are you? Where is your house? What window is broken? Like where in your house did that window? So now you have his name. You have kind of what happened. You have a phone number just in case you need to contact him again. And you also have his address. Where am I going to go in response to this call? Because you're going to have to go see that window for yourself and maybe get some photographs and, and do your investigation as you see fit. 
So uh, you will go there, you'll do what you need to do, your investigations, you might get some more information and of which you will add that information. You will write down the, the when. Jimmy, when did this happen? I'm not sure I was gone for the weekend. I came home on a, on a Sunday night, it already happened. So the when you have is Friday, maybe when they left, it was fine. When Jimmy came home on Sunday, it, so it happened, that's the when. You have a time frame. Say, how? How did this happen? Is there something that broke the window? Was it, you know, we don't know. So you'll write, how was this window uh, smashed? If you don't know, you can just write the word how with a question mark because in this point of your investigation, maybe you just don't know yet. Okay, so uh, throughout your investigation, you, you speak with Jimmy and the complainant here and you say, tell me what happened. Well, I, I'm not really sure. You know, I was gone for the weekend. I came home, my window was smashed. You gotta think, has a criminal offense occurred? Yes, seemingly it has. I mean, listen, I have been to calls where it's been a bird that's flown into the window and smashed it. So you've gotta do your due diligence in your investigation and figure out, did an offense occur? And what are the elements of that offense? So let's say, yes, let's say there is a rock inside. This is just hypothetical. Let's say there's a rock inside. Jimmy, I see a rock down here. What's going on? Make sure that that is in your what of your notebook. What happened? A rock came flying through the window. And uh, so you're going to write all the stuff down. So we know the who, we know the what happened, we know the where, we know we have a time frame of, of when, and then we also have to say the how. And I, and I put asterisks beside the how because sometimes we never even find out how it happened. Sometimes it goes unsolved. We can exhaust every avenue we can, but make sure that all of that stuff is in your notes. So it's gonna look something like this. I'm gonna pop it up on the screen. This is what it might look like typed out because you won't understand my chicken scratch. So this is what it's gonna look like. Okay, so that is an idea of a non-emergency. So you're getting a phone call or you get the, the maybe it came through 911, but you're, you're making the phone call perhaps from your office or from wherever you are, uh, and you're gonna figure out some of those quick points to, to write down the who, what, when, where, why, and how. Get those contacts going, make sure that you, uh, if the line does uh, disconnect for whatever reason, you know sort of how to get in touch with that person again. Now, some of this information, I will tell you, might come through OCC. That's right. The, the, the uh, communication center, they might tell you a lot of that information. Still write it down in your notebooks, okay? So let's say you go to, you go to Jimmy and, and you, you see all that happen and you begin your investigation. I'm gonna talk about uh, late entries, but before I do, because late entries in your notebook seem to happen more on an emergency type of call. So I'm gonna explain, here, are an, or here is an emergency uh, example. So boom. 911 calls, something happened, someone got assaulted. You've got to get there quick because you want to make sure that they are okay. You want to make sure that if there are any suspects around, you can make an arrest, whatever. And you can go on in your investigation. But all you have to do at this point, at least what I do, is I still will write down call because as soon as that radio goes off, I will write down the, the time and I will write down the word call. The file number, I'll associate it later. I just write down everything that your dispatch is saying to you really quickly as far as the who. Who is calling? Who is the complainer or victim? You gotta find that out. Also, if there is a phone number that the uh, that the communication center gives you, jot that down also. Of course, then you gotta figure out the where because you gotta get in your police car and go somewhere. So make sure you know what is going on. Now, that is a bare bones. You know who, you know where, and you know what's happened. So. Jimmy, poor Jimmy. Jimmy, get, he calls in because he has been assaulted by someone. Where did this happen? This happened maybe at his residence. You got to figure out where is his, what is the address? Where is the residence? Um, so then you've got you've to get there. So when you get there, you may not have time to sit. There. In fact, I'm going to encourage you, if someone is injured, if something is happening and, and stuff is going on, maybe someone's running from you, don't grab your notebook right away and start writing down things. Well, suspect is wearing a you know, a black sweater and a red hat. I see him running away. He's running southbound. No, no, you might need to go get that guy. If Jimmy is injured severely, you might need to take him to the hospital. Uh, you might need to contact EMS. So while these things are happening in an emergency type situation, your notebook is very, very important. But what's more important 
is that you render assistance accordingly. And so when you get all those things going, let's say Jimmy has to go to the hospital, EMS is on their way, they go and pick him up. You know that he is cared for. Jimmy, I will go see you in the hospital in just a little bit. If you make an arrest on your suspect uh, and you have the evidence to proceed, you go ahead and do the investigation like you need to do. Now, once all the dust is settled, you know Jimmy's gonna be okay, the, the person who did this has been arrested, now you've got some time and, and everything is kind of calm, the dust has settled, now you need to go and do what is called a late entry. Late entry, very important that you uh, are very clear in your late entry. So, here's my notebook. I'm gonna kind of, I hope it's in focus here, it's just me and my soloness, but I hope it's in, so you might, over here, write down, if this happened at 9 a.m., let's say Jimmy got assaulted at 9 a.m., and now after everything has been calmed down and the dust has settled, Jimmy's okay, suspect's arrested, whoo, you can take a deep breath, and you figure out, you get your wits about, you know what's going on, you, now let's say it's 11.30 in the morning, so it's two and a half hours after the fact, it's 11.30, you will write 11.30, and then beside this, you will put late entry, at least this is what I do, I will put late entry, and then after the late entry, I will put the time that the call, so I will refer back to, uh, so if, if it's, you know, 11.30 here and it's, uh, you know, late entry, 9 o'clock, so I will go back to my 9 o'clock, which may only be a couple of lines, but it's enough because it just happened, it's still fresh in your memory. So then you will go ahead and write down all of the details of what happened. You know, you arrived on scene, you spoke with so-and-so, this is what you've observed, and you know, if there was a suspect, you make sure you do describe them. All of those sorts of things is, now is the time that you do that. But make sure that it is known it is a late entry. Don't try to uh, fluff it off like, oh, just write down like it happened right now. No, because if it didn't happen right now, and you fully know that it didn't happen right now, don't be writing down that it just happened. There is nothing wrong with a late entry as long as it's articulated why. Your Honor, I had to write this down two and a half hours later because I had to render assistance to Jimmy and I had to arrest the suspect, right? Makes sense. No one is going to fault you for that. It is all good. So that is the difference between a non-emergency and an emergency call. So again, I'm going to get back to my tip. The who, what, when, where, why, and how. Um, maybe you will write here as a stencil so that every note that you take, you will refer back to the front page. Oh yeah, okay, so I'll write down. Write down the words who and write down the complainant. You know, what happened, assault, what, uh, you know, where, and the address, and, and so on. Make sure you get those things in some sort of order and then try to do your best in recreating that same stencil for all of your notes, for all of the calls that happen. It's going to pay dividends to you in the future because uh, there will be times when you are going from one call to another call to another call and it gets very busy. So you may have multiple late entries, but when you follow that stencil and you get very comfortable, that is going to be fluid for you and it's going to make sense. Because again, you might have to recall this one, two, three, five, whatever years down the road, you might have to answer for your actions and tell the courtroom what happened. So those are some of the basic note taking. I call it note taking 101. You've got to craft your own notes. You've got to make it make sense to you and uh, following along with your services guidelines. So I hope this has helped you. Uh, follow the links down, down below in my other social media because uh, there's always sorts of, all sorts of stuff going on, all sorts of encouragements and all sorts of tips and tricks. So listen, we are here to build one another up. This is a community, common unity. There's enough junk out there that tears us down. Friends, always, always be aware of your surroundings.